Um, first things first, I'm here as a babysitter, but now as I'm speaking, I'm here in the role of a, a researcher. So I'm currently doing my PhD, and as I have three children, I need to show as much time of my daily work as possible. And the thing I do is automation. So automate as much as possible and make my work as efficient as possible doing research. What the fuck? This is pretty bad. Okay, so as I'm a computer scientist, I usually don't work like that. But my usual process involves I don't. I, I try, I try, I try. Maybe, maybe. So, so basically what, I, what my daily work involves is reading, reading and lots of reading and organizing what I've read and then writing things up I'm, I basically think about or found out. So talking about reading is kind of boring. So in one of the first versions of my talks on making my work efficient, um, I was talking about writing. And for that I have a kind of a method that involves multi-markdown and Pandoc with a slight extension with um, Ruby and it's, re it's really weird. But today I want to talk about organizing. I, I really, I, this is so, <laughs> so, how one you should not give a presentation? <laughs> no. No, no. No, no, okay, no. just. Okay. So, everything went wrong that could go wrong. Don't so, this, yes, yes. So, what, what my daily work involves is. So what you do, you, you manage all those papers you've read, you kind of store them, you search text fragments in those files, you look up bib page entries when you write papers. So, and what I you also usually do is conducting a literature survey. So finding out all the related work since the year 2000 up to now and kind of sifting through all this stuff that has been written and kind of organizing what I've got. So what I need to do is I need to look up all these specific BibTeX files or BibTeX entries and filter them. And then in accordance to what I've found out as relevant papers, I want to download them to um, actually read through them. So in my group where I work, I did a small survey what they actually use and surprisingly um, there are still lots of people that don't use any tools and the file browser and the usual text editor is still a prevalent tool to use. So there are tools for automa automating the first part, so storing papers, going through papers, start automatically downloading BibTeX entries. Um, one tool is Mendeley, there's also Zotero. So my question is, what other things can I automate? So now I want, really want to go into automation. So as I have not much time, I will gloss over the first part, the management of the stored papers. I also have um, a tool for that. But for now, I really want to focus on the literature survey part. Because in our time, 
don't know how it's in, it's, uh, it is the case in your community, but for me as a software engineering, um, there are lots of papers coming out and I need to keep tr track and need to keep up with the time. And that's also the problem. If you don't automate your, your queries, you can never handle these masses of papers. You, you, can, you actually cannot deal with the thousands of paper published on context-aware um, context self-adaptive systems published each, each year. So what we need is basically Batman's tool belt. For that, I have uh, compiled four scripts. One script to um, look up BibTash entries for stored files. And then Gaze Research is a tool that queries Google Scholar and extracts BibTash entries for a given query string. BibFilter is kind of um, a small tool that is able to sift through large BibTash, entry, uh, BibTash files and filters them according to different criteria. And GS Download is a script that allows you to download um, documents from a, for a given uh, BibTash entry. So, th this is important, the disclaimer disappeared. So, that's one big problem. Uh, Google Scholar does not provide an API. So, whenever you do this, do not harm Google Scholar. Because for me, and for now, it's the best service to use. Any publisher has their own format, their own way of providing their entries, their papers to the users. And Google Scholar is, the, for me, the single most point that has all the papers and is up to the time. But they don't provide an API, and they ban you if you kind of automatically download these things. So for an efficient uh, literature survey, what are the basic steps you need to do? You define a query string, and you basically want to get all the results for a given year for this query string. And then after the fetch this raw material, you want to filter them. Yes, identify all the recent or the basically the work that is really relevant for your consideration. And afterwards, you want to download this. For each step, there's a tool. So for fetching the raw material, you use GIS Research. Afterwards, you use a script that is called Autofilter. It's basically a shell script that iterates um, and uses the BibFilter script. And afterwards, you use GIS Download to download all the relevant files you selected. So, the script works in a seamless way, so uh, I work on a Linux machine, so everything is developed for, uh, for shell, for bash script, but yeah, I think it's probably also usable uh, within Sigwin or other environments on Windows machines. So, there's one point standing here, be patient. The reason is I need to simulate a human. Yes? Otherwise, Google would spot me. But as this machine can work from Friday to Monday, 24-7 over the weekend, and I can be at home and playing with my children, and the machine just thinks, OK, there's a stupid human sitting there and pushing buttons. So for the filtering step, so usually when you get the raw material, you get lots of false positives. So what I'm, I, uh, I came to the, I came to the con conclusion for my research, I focused on two criteria to select papers. Um, the first criteria is whether it's published in one of the four biggest publishers, because this ensures peer review. And you usually also drop off lots of books and articles Google Scholar founds on the web, basically. And then you filter on the number of citations according to logarithmic scale. So 
there's a constant here that says basically I want that there are at least 10 citations uh, for that paper uh, if its age is older than 10 years and so on. And afterwards, you, yes, what? Uh, uh, logarithmic 10, to, to the base of 10. So that's why the 10 years. And afterwards, you still need to go manually through that. But, um, so basically you can use Bitfilter in, in an interactive mode and get the ta titles, uh, titles of the papers and a link where you can look up the abstract and then manually discard papers. And the script also rewards you if you kill, have a kill streak. So it says something like multi-kill and ultra-kill and so on. This helps a lot if you have thousands of papers to go through. So afterwards, um, you get all the relevant papers in one folder, and then you can start the GS download shell script, which basically calls uh, the GS download Ruby script. And this downloads the related papers or the selected papers from the respective uh, publishers. Currently, as you might assume, um, only the four biggest publishers are supported. But it's a modular concept, so you can basically write a new module that supports another publisher. So what you can do in the end, you can also collect the statistics. So this autofilter script can be run in any step of the process and it collects all the statistics. So number of publications per year, average count of citations, minimum and maximum number of citations per year, and so on, and so on. Number of real papers, proceedings, in collections, books, PhD theses, and so on, and so on. Up to this point, I don't make graphs from that, but it's, this is planned in the future. So there's no time for a short example. So last thing, all these tools are publicly available at GitHub. So there's a GitHub page. Basically, Bitfilter is a separate tool which comes without the disclaimer. And all the other tools are basically used with care. And don't tell anyone. <laughs> OK. So what, what can we do with this tool set? So we can automate the BibTash lookup. This is what I didn't tell you. Um, I can automate lookup for specific publications for a certain topic. I can automatically filter them. I can automatically download the reference papers. And so I can conduct a semi-automatic literature survey. Um, currently, students um, developed a tool that is able to read a BibTeX file and where you can create a taxonomy and then categorize each paper and basically also generate statistics and a diagram and a table where you really can classify all the papers. So this is the next step for a real literature survey. Once you have all these things together, the idea is in the future that you hit, um, that you hit compile and get the basic stops for a literature survey. So all the statistics information can be compiled in a text. Yeah, this basically doesn't change. The steps doesn't change what you do, what you did. Just the statistical information, the numbers change. Yes, then you can compile the diagrams. Then you can create the table with the classification and so on and so on. So this is the next thing I'm looking into. So if there aren't any questions, thank you. <laughs> Yes, please. So, if I understand that uh, well, your main method is number of citations. So, you're only paying attention to papers that others are paying attention to. Yes, but um, within the script, you should adjust this number. So, you adjust the, the, so this logarithmic scale has kind of a base value. 
and you should adjust this baseline to your research topic. So if you're researching in the field of context-aware self-adaptive systems, you should choose a high number. But if you're working in a kind of separate field, Yes, but you can always look into the raw things and in the previous filter steps, which things you might missed. So, so basically, the, you can always decide and move one paper to the relevant manually. But within a survey paper, it's always easy to, to say, I filtered with these criteria because everyone ex expects this, okay, what other means do we have? I'm really sorry, I don't have a good answer to, to, to your question because we, we all know these forgotten pearls and it seems that every now and then 40 years old things stumble, came up again and are presented as new ideas and new inventions. Yeah. Maybe like a, a randomly chosen message of the day after you log in and you know, if we all did that, <laughs> we just all had like, a look at a random paper every day, which probably discovered. Um, well, I think that would be far more interesting and far, uh, it would be really funny. I had this script run to any publication on ICSI. It's a big software engineering conference. And as I go, got through the titles, I just looked at the titles of the papers and they seemed, they appeared to be randomly generated. I couldn't tell the difference. So I want to make a game out of it and have randomly generated and you have to decide which one is an ICSI paper and which one is a randomly generated one. Okay, other questions? Yes. No, I get the papers from the actual publishers. So you have to be in some institutions Yes, quite unfortunately you have to be on the institution. I, uh, the, the problem with that is I have no way of ensuring that um, you get free access to the papers. So I don't use ResearchGate or other means to, to automate this part yet. Uh, what do you mean with bottleneck? No, no, watermarking. Watermarking like downloading the same uh, paper from different locations because I always thought that, that might be an interesting thing to research. I've never seen a really. So, so up to this point, I just use the basic functionality the website provides, and I basically um, um, emulate a human that clicks on the download link and saves the file. So from, from their perspective, they cannot tell whether I'm a... Sure, well, what I'm suggesting is we should like run your script on a, a, a defined set of papers for each of those four publishers. Let's say, for example, from different research locations and uh, at different points in time, and then logically get the exact same files. Because if not, then, you know, they're watermarked. So ah, okay, okay. So that might be just a very interesting Actually, I didn't check. I didn't check whether I get the same file once in a while. But I think you, you don't need these masses of files to do these checks, but just one single file where you have the in intuition that this might be the case. So it's, the tool is not meant to be used for kind of figuring out the watermarking technique they use. Okay, other questions? Then I thank you all for your...